Before we get into the details of the BBST courses, you need to understand a bit about the underlying software testing philosophy that guides our approach to the field. In this presentation, I also introduce you to some of the learning theories and perspectives that guided the development of the BBST courses. Before you start teaching BBST courses, it's important for you to understand the testing philosophy espoused in the BBST materials. Testing experts disagree on a variety of topics within their field. Brett Petticord, Kem Kaner, and James Bach have organized some of these testing debates according to schools of software testing. For more information on the schools of software testing, you can review Petticord's presentation or Kaner's blog post from your list of readings. The leaders in the BBST efforts identify with the context-driven school of software testing, and the BBST materials emphasize the importance of context to the testing efforts. To illustrate, Kem Kaner provided a partial list of how contexts can vary across projects in a presentation to the workshop on software testing. In the presentation, he said that testers must learn, for each new product, what are the goals and quality criteria for the project, what skills and resources are available to the project, what is in the product, how it could fail, what the consequences of potential failures could be, who might care about which consequence of what failure, how to trigger a fault that generates the failure we're seeking, how to recognize failure, how to decide what result variables to pay attention to, how to decide what other result variables to pay attention to in the event of intermittent failure, how to expose and who to expose to undelivered benefits, unsatisfied implications, traps, and missed opportunities. As you work with BBS BST materials, we hope you will understand that the materials in these courses do not in any way promote one right answer that covers any and every testing situation. One only needs to look at Kaner's list of how contexts vary to understand that no single approach to testing will optimize testing efforts for every conceivable project. We hope you will encourage your students to critically engage with the materials and ideas presented in the BBST course materials and to participate in thoughtful discussion about when specific ideas and techniques covered in the course should be used and when they should not. We encourage you to invite students who hold honest and well-considered differences of opinion than those promoted in BBST materials to express those opinions as well as to consider the ideas presented in the BBST materials. Now let's turn to our teaching philosophy. We used some of what we know about learning theory to develop the online courses. We don't expect you to become experts in learning theories, but we wanted to mention and summarize a few that have been particularly useful to the BBST courses. Malcolm Knowles is widely viewed as a pioneer in andragogy, or the teaching of adult learners. Despite the controversy of Knowles' work, we find the principles identified in his work useful as we develop and teach BBST courses. In particular, you will see advice that follows from our agreement that adults are self-directed, that our students' experience is a valuable resource for our courses, and that sometimes we must provide experiences on which they can build, and that students want courses that are relevant and authentic to their real-world experience. Constructivism holds that students must build their own understanding of concepts, and they frequently do this by exploring difficult problems with a helpful coach to bridge what students already know and what they still need to know. That collaboration helps learning, that student reflection enhances learning, and that assessment can happen in the context of teaching. Although this isn't a proper learning theory, a student's prior knowledge of a topic is one of the most important influences on their ability to learn new information or skills. Talented teachers make the most of students' prior knowledge by using strategies to remind students of what they already know. Like a painter priming a surface before painting, or a gardener preparing the soil before planting, these strategies prepare the student's mind for the learning that is to come. In the BBST course model, we introduced you to the cycle of preparation, instruction, reflection that we use to teach new content. The purpose of the preparatory exercises throughout BBST materials is to prepare students for the information and strategies presented in the video lectures and course readings. A few effective techniques to activate prior knowledge include analogy, storytelling, review questions, and recall of previous experiences. Many of you are already familiar with Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy of learning objectives, at least the taxonomy for the cognitive domain. Developed with a group of colleagues in 1956, Bloom's taxonomy continues to be one of the most, if not the most, popular taxonomy in discussions of teaching today. Bloom's taxonomy has faced a good bit of criticism over the years, in part because psychologists have learned more about how people learn. Anderson, a former student of Bloom's, and Crathwell revised the taxonomy. Kaner and Bach have extended the Anderson and Crathwell revision even further to make it more relevant to the field of software testing. Bloom started with a one-dimensional taxonomy, classifying thinking according to complexity. 
Anderson and Crathwell changed a bit of the terminology and modified the structure, making the taxonomy a two-dimensional table. So, for each type of knowledge, for example procedure, students might demonstrate that they remember the procedure, understand the procedure, and can apply the procedures. Kainer and Bach tried working with both versions of the taxonomy, but they were dissatisfied with them because they believe skilled testers rely on other types of knowledge that weren't represented in either version. Therefore, Kainer and Bach added cognitive strategies, models, skills, and attitudes to the taxonomy. Use your favorite search engine to find many explanations of Bloom's taxonomy if you'd like to know more. For information on the Kainer and Bach extension, visit Kainer's blog listed in the readings.